The Healthy Brain Initiative has made a lot of progress since it was established 20 years ago. We just released our fourth edition of the Healthy Brain Initiative Roadmap for State and Local Public Health as really a way for communities to have a framework or a structure of where to start thinking about what they can do with respect to brain health in their community. We know that the prevalence and proportion of those living with Alzheimer's and dementia will also continue to grow. So we really need to come at this from a multi-sector approach, thinking about the life course of the disease and the continuum of care that we need. And the place to start is public health. So the Healthy Brain Initiative Roadmap does take that public health approach of looking at primary prevention, secondary prevention, and tertiary prevention. We know that we want to strengthen policies and partnerships to measure, evaluate, and utilize data to ensure that we are building and supporting a skilled and diverse workforce. And we want to make sure that the public and all of our communities are engaged and educated. The Bold Infrastructure for Alzheimer's Act is addressing and helping to build that infrastructure for public health departments to address risk reduction, detection and diagnosis, and caregiving support. The CDC is funding 43 public health departments to implement the Healthy Brain Initiative Roadmap. The goal is for them to make an impact in their community, and they know their community. Everything that comes with brain health and dementia and caregivers, the communities that we serve are folks that have the greatest need uh, and the least amount of access. We're going in there and really setting up for some sustainable groups for that community to be able to take the lead on what it is that they need to do around brain health. Much of our focus has been around serving communities that have been underserved and have experienced health equity issues. Too many people don't have access to neuropsychologists or specialty geriatrics. So it's very important that we have the trusted messengers try to create those relationships by being trusted partners ourselves. We have a very diverse rural urban community and so educating our providers and training them on cultural humility and even implicit bias, equity should be integrated within and not something built in later um, to address these needs. Many of our tribes don't have a word for dementia or brain health or memory loss. Um, because the way that we're raised and in our communities is to care for our elders through their aging process. And so what we've been doing um, for the past three years is bringing um, education and awareness to our tribal communities around Alzheimer's and uh, related dementias. We are very proud to get this started because beforehand this has been a topic that has not been a top priority for our community. The possibility of this becoming a problem and just saying, oh, it's old age. That's what we're trying to overcome is the stigma that people, one, put with dementia and Alzheimer's, and two, making sure that we're communicating that it is medically important to start talking to their health professionals and getting this educational awareness. The bold funding is able to allow me to increase the Office of Dementia Services, so taking this public health approach I'm very excited on getting even a bigger connection and having more people at the table and giving them something to do. It really did start opening doors and building the bridges and the connections and to get everybody on the same page to address dementia. We're trying to raise the bar on getting primary care to take a more active role in detecting dementias and managing them. Um, because earlier detection is one of the goals that we're, we're out to um, increase. So having the Healthy Brain Initiative as the guide for that work was invaluable. The Healthy Brain Initiative does take a life course perspective to brain health. Our goals, strategies, and recommendations really come from the um, Healthy Brain Initiative. We will continue to use them to inform our work, whether it's policy, whether it's evaluation and measurement, whether it's workforce development, or whether it's health education and trying to empower people to understand this. It's really exciting to think about the point of time where we are right now. In five or 10 years, what dementia detection, diagnosis, treatment, and care will look like will be vastly different. No matter what community you live in, no matter what your zip code is, everyone deserves a life with the healthiest brain possible.